Back of the envelope calculations, well, uh, they put tourism revenue in an ever-increasing black hole thanks to intensifying measures to contain the spread of COVID-19. Tourism Industry Aotearoa's Chief Executive, Chris Roberts, joins me now. Chris, this situation in, US, uh, in the US, is it a game-changer, do you think? Good evening, Lisa. Uh, well, it's just another factor in a very rapidly evolving situation. That it's, we're getting these sort of... Um, blows happening almost on an hourly basis it feels at the moment so it just adds to a, an ever-changing picture and it certainly will further dampen global travel and so New Zealand will feel, uh, will feel some of the uh, fallout from that. So can you put a number on the fallout you know rough rough ballpark figures how much is this costing our tourism industry? Well, we were expecting uh, international visitors to spend $18 billion in New Zealand this year. Uh, looking at some, what I would call mid-range scenarios, and not the worst case, um, looking at what we've actually already seen spent in January, February, and now into March, and what might happen for the rest of the year. If, if we're still grappling with this issue as we go through the year, um, we could quite easily see a $7 billion hit. So that $18 billion of expected revenue for New Zealand falling down to $11 billion. So um, shaving, sorry other... Chris, just, just so that we've got these figures clear, $7 billion shaved off tourism if this is still running by the end of the year, roughly speaking. Yep, and that's, um, that's equivalent to 8% of our total New Zealand export receipts. Uh, so it's a pretty significant blow to the whole economy if, if that is the outcome. And that's that's based on um, still keeping at least 50% of the expected visitors. And how realistic do you think that is? I think uh, that's realistic for uh, our biggest and closest market, Australia. Uh, it may well be our saving grace um, if we can keep the Australian visitors coming in. Uh, it is our biggest market, um, we, and that will be um, a, a really strong support. And we also need, of course, the domestic market to be maintained um, it's a little alarming at the moment um, to see that there's some reluctance to travel around New Zealand. We don't have community transmission right now. There is no reason not to travel around New Zealand. There's no reason not to go out to restaurants and cafes, but we are seeing public re reluctance to do that. So, so Chris, could Air New really Zealand help you out with that in terms of domestic travel? Could Air New Zealand help you out with that by having more deals, encouraging people to get out there and travel in their own country? Absolutely, and they're absolutely willing to do that, and we're in discussions with them and, and, and with uh, government. And one of the things um, the industry uh, is wanting to talk to government about is giving Tourism New Zealand uh, a special dispensation from its mandate, which is only to market internationally. We now think that the time is right for them to uh, have, have a role in a domestic tourism marketing campaign to encourage New Zealanders to get out and see their own country. So you are anticipating and are in talks with Air New Zealand about getting some cheap deals out there for Kiwi travellers? Well, it's, it's not always about cheap deals. It's just about um, putting these deals and opportunities together. And yes, we're in communication. The good thing is there's a, a huge amount of communication going on. I think I've been in seven COVID-19 related meetings today. So um, everyone's talking to everybody else and we're trying to share information and get the right decisions taken uh, and also trying to respond to these, uh, these new, the news and the events and the changes that are just coming in um, so rapidly. So what are your members telling you? Are they laying people off? Yes. Um, uh, up to a week ago, it was, it was casual and temporary jobs. And um, that's certainly changed. People are now facing having to um, lay off permanent staff. We've been working with officials closely this week as they develop the uh, wage subsidy scheme um, that Cabinet will be considering next week. Um, so that, that offers some hope that there'll be some subsidies for employers who otherwise would be laying staff off, and that may uh, should help keep some people on. Um, there'll also need to be uh, tax relief, I think, um, there has been um, messaging around IRD being more flexible with how it treats payments. I mean, that flexibility will need to be quite considerable. Some businesses just won't be in the position to pay their upcoming tax payments and, and they need to, to be allowed to defer those payments. So this is sending some people to the wall, basically? 
Yes, and we've already got a handful of companies we know that have gone to the wall, but, but that number is, is likely to increase quite substantially. So currently, what would you put that number at? A dozen? Oh, more? We're, we're, yeah, no more than a dozen probably at the moment, and others that have suspended. Certainly the, the small businesses who were um, servicing the China market have basically just closed their doors because they've got no customers. Now, they may be able to restart again visitors from China start coming in again. So what's Um, your position on that ban, Chris? What's your position on the ban from people coming directly from China to New Zealand? We're calling for the government to now lift the travel ban on China uh, and to change it to a ban on just Hubei province. Um, We understand that's still the epicentre of of the virus and there's still some issues there, but uh, for the rest of China, they're essentially seeing no new cases now. There are at least eight countries uh, that have higher infection rates than China. So there is no real justification anymore to have the travel ban. And if we were to lift that, it's a really strong signal uh, to China. It would allow the airlines uh, to to schedule flights, get freight moving into China again, and get those passengers moving in uh, to China again. So um, we think looking at what's happening on a global situation, we may see further travel bans and travel restrictions on other markets, but the one that's been in place on China is no longer really justifiable. So there are different rules for people coming from Italy and Korea. They only have to self-isolate for 14 days but are allowed into the country. Why do you think it's different for people coming from China? I think just it was the first ban put on um, and it was to try and contain New Zealand's part in playing and containing the virus. But China has actually done a pretty remarkable job at containing the virus within China, but it's got away uh, around the world and, and in places like Europe. So um, we need to rethink that position now. There is no point thinking that this is a China issue. Um, the, the, the threats now are coming from other parts of the world and, and we need to rethink of, of how we approach the Chinese situation. Have you spoken to the government about that and have they given you any indication that they're going to shift on it? We've spoken at some of the meetings today to uh, official groups and their, and, the, and their role is to feed um, that information back up to government. So I'm sure those, those channels are open so they'll be well aware um, of our view. Um, and so we realise that uh, there's many aspects to be taken into account here. Health uh, and, and the health and well-being of New Zealand has been the primary one, and we, and we recognise that has to come first. But we, we, we think using good health and science-based decision-making at the moment and looking at where the, the, the risks and threats are coming from, um, that easing the ban on China and allowing some travel to come back um, makes sense now. So Cabinet's due to consider that early next week, I believe. What's your message to them right now? This situation is evolving so rapidly and uh, measures put in place, um, we are told, are under constant review. So if they are reviewing some of these issues, then it is time to make some changes.